So you want to learn about the state of kickboxing, huh? Sit your motherfucking ass down, boy. Man, sit your dumb ass down. Because I'm about to educate you. This sport, ladies and gentlemen, is in purgatory. Why? 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 Simple. Only two continents out there really give a shit about kickboxing, and that is Europe and Asia. Now, you might be lucky to find some in Articans fucking scrapping, maybe some Eskimos out in a nice cap somewhere. You might be lucky to find some people in the UK. Ain't gonna find too many in the US of A. But I'll tell you this, folks. The sport's gonna remain in purgatory for a good while. You know why? Because the people in charge of it, the people that run it, the people that make all of the critical decisions in kickboxing are stupid. You are made of stupid. I mean, it's not anything you don't already know, but it's, it's to a point now where nobody can really be trusted to take the sport over. Glory has been shooting itself in the foot for over a decade and a half now. Bankruptcy, fumbled opportunities at ESPN, CEOs leaving and crawling back when glory has no other option. Even getting rid of people that actually want to make the promotion better. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine someone actually trying to make the promotion better and make the sport better. Marcel Holst tried to do that. All the way until Glory's favorite people, well, I should say Rico's favorite people, Scott Rudman and all of those Glory executives decided to force him out since his plans didn't exactly align with the plans of protecting one Rico Verhoeven. All of a sudden, the lighter weight fighters were going to get more attention. The heavyweight division was going to have more competition. And above all, shows were now going to be done outside of just the normal circle of countries. But of course, Glory couldn't get out of its own way. So now all those plans are down the, down the drain. And funny enough, one of their main competition, one of their main competitors, K1, picked up that bag and ran with it all the way to Romania. And now K1 is going to put on one of their best shows ever. In a place that should have been glory territory. <laughs> Best in the sport? I don't think so. And speaking of K1. K1 is, I would say, maybe the only hope the sport has at this point. Of anything respectable. Because Asian Donald Trump over at one championship is found a way to, he's, he's found a way to take kickboxing and turn it into a sideshow. He took a star in Takeru and used him as a fucking carrot and dangled him in front of investors in Japan and said, hey, you next. You want to be next in line with one championship? I got your reason right here in Takeru. And of course they bit and it ended up paying off for Chatri. And what did Chatri do as soon as he was done with him? He fed him to an absolute savage and super lick. Would have been Rod Tang, but Rod Tang snapped his arm in two pieces. But even so, Super Lake beat the shit out of him. And Chatri didn't show any remorse. He pretty much said, listen, I, I got everything I needed out of Takeru. I don't even need the man anymore. I don't want to play with you anymore. And it's fucked up because for some reason... To one championship, the sport is a sideshow. It's a circus. One of their premier champions is on the shelf in Shingas Alazov. One of their premier talents in Petrosian, the Italian dentist doctor. That motherfucker is on the shelf right now. That man has to create his own events just for people to remember that he's not dead. That's sad, ain't it? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And how can we forget, how can we forget, a good amount of kickboxers are not only on the shelf, but there's a recent one that's worth talking about in Imam Barlow. 
And why does that name matter? Because she retired. And why does she retire? Because Chaudhry kept her on the shelf so long, put her on ice for so long, held her out for so long, that she just couldn't take it anymore. She said, fuck this shit. I'm out of here. And retired. That's sad, ain't it? <laughs> and it gets worse, folks. You can't count on Infusion for anything respectable because the one time they were penned the work with Glory, the guy running it, unfortunately, has uh, Belgium authorities breathing down his neck, so that thing just disappeared. Can't count on Rise because just like with Infusion, Rise don't know how to work with people. They fumble bags. Rise and Glory had a co-promotion. It was not one of the best. And they haven't really worked together since. And K1, hell, they tried to work with, with Rise, but Rise and their fuckery has been so bad when it comes to the judging and the referees that Rise picks to where K1 said, nope, not even going to do business with you no more. Rise needs to find a way to rise because if they don't rise, them motherfuckers is going to keep on falling. They're going to just get a free fall all the way to rock bottom. And I mean, you can just go down the list of places. You know, Dynamite Fight Show is fine, but that's mainly Romanian talent. King of Kings is fine, but it's more so to find who's next in line. The only real hope we have is K1. And that shit is sad. It's sad because it shouldn't come down to this. But it has. Sportsman in the goddamn gutter for so long. And so many bags have been fumbled and so many stupid decisions have been made that it's hard to trust the sport growing in any direction. Hell, Rico is now manning the ship and my man is finding a way to just sink it to the bottom. It's The, the glory is, is the Titanic right now. It's a goddamn Titanic right now. In a minute, it's about to be that submarine that blew up uh, down the bottom of the ocean not that long ago. It's about to hit that level. I mean, come on. Rico literally ran through his second one-night tournament, at least the second that anyone can really recall. I mean, there was Glory 77. Then there was a Glory Grand Prix. They're running out of challengers for the guy. Well, actually, they're not even running out. They have officially run out. They have nobody. They have no one. And the one guy that they did fucking have that everybody wants to see, and Jamal Ben Sadiq is being blacklisted because he came this close to beating Rico Verhoeven in a collision. Nearly beat him on short notice. And ever since then, Gloria's been just fucking petrified, scared, and terrified of the idea of rebooking that fight, giving Jamal Ben Sadiq a full camp, and giving him a real opportunity to take that belt away from Rico. Not no short notice bullshit. And the worst part is, Rico is not interested in any sort of serious competition. This man thinks he's 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 the Floyd Mayweather or Canelo Alvarez kickboxing. Just wants to take it easy and ride off into the sunset. And I get that. But here's my thing. He doesn't want to retire anytime soon. He wants to do crossover fights. He wants to do things that people actually pay attention to. Well, guess what, Rico? You want people to pay attention? How about you fight the guy that everybody wants you to fight, but for some reason you won't? Just thought, you know. Uh, but of course, he's probably going to end up fighting Levy Rikers. And listen, Levy gave him a great effort on one good leg and one night tournament. But let's be honest, outside of that effort, uh, I don't have a lot of faith in Levy in the future. I mean, Levy's been the future for damn near... Uh, about a decade and three quarters, and yet I'm supposed to believe in this guy now because he almost beat Rico. He got a flash knockdown while dude was standing on one good leg. Nah. I want to be excited, but I'm not. I'm just not. 